long now, okay, guys? <laughs> Let's take a moment to applaud all of the writers and literary admirers who took the time from their schedules to participate in this creative endeavor. Just for showing up, they deserve admiration and applause. Come on, folks. Uh, <laughs> All right. Furthermore, we must acknowledge the importance of James Browning Keppel, the publisher and founder of Underground Books. Quite honestly, that tireless supporter of the written word is the one who made this event possible. Come on, let's hear it for James. Hey, hey. LA, how are you? Fine, how you doing? I am fine now that I see you. Thank you, my friend. Greatly appreciated. At yes, this point sir. in our celebration of free expression, I must pay tribute to the late, great Luis Reyes Rivera. As far as I'm concerned, he wrote the definitive tribute to our chosen form of creative writing titled Inside the River of Poetry. Here is an excerpt from that essay. Always there is a need for song and every human has a poem to write, a compulsion to contemplate out loud and urge to dig out that ore of confusion locked up inside. Poetry, you see, is as old as breath itself. For when human beings across the planet simultaneously uttered that first initial sound, they gave rise to the same echo heard in the wail of every newborn child. Thus, the birth of the word, the root of every language, poetry, the strength of the people, the finest manifestation of current content and intent in every written and oral expression, the basis upon which all other literary genres have evolved. Put your hands together for Brother Rivera's wisdom, please. I am sure if Brother Rivera were here, he would agree with my statement that poetry provides the heart necessary postage for mailing emotions to a page or a stage. While considering that statement, I am pleased to introduce our first poetic messenger, Dr. Anita C. Powell is the mother of beautiful twin daughters. She is a proud grandmother of five precious children her ability to create and maintain love does not end there. Proof of this fact is in her great artistry as an international spoken word poet and author. Now, with all the devotion of a family, let's welcome Dr. Anita C. Powell. Thank you, thank you Bob. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank everybody. You. I'm so honored to be here. I'd like to share two pieces with you. Uh, one is holding on and then the other one is empty. And I have my clock here to keep time, okay? Yeah, all right. Holding on. It's morning, 3.15, and I'm awakened by a dream. A dream from the universe whispering in verse to the sparkle of my spirit makes its way to my soul, and I hear it. I am worthy. I deserve the best. I am enough. I am love, I am loved. I am guided by God with each step I take, which each thought I make creates and manifests the dream of my heart's desire, fulfilling the need of my soul's urge. Wherever I am is where I am to be. A dream of a thought I wanted a lifetime to feel it was mine as tears of emptiness from my heart escape from my almond shaped eyes, cascading down the curve of my face, leaving a trace, a trace of emotional hurt, physical pain of yesterday. Holding on to a dream I hoped would stay within the scope of my reality, mold into my consciousness. But as I reminisce on the day before, it comes to the poor. And like a shrinking violet, I want to disappear into the atmosphere and not see a thing, only to hear within my dream. I am worthy. I deserve the best. I am enough. I am love. I am loved. I am guided by God with each step I take, 
With each thought I make, yes it does, it creates and manifests the dream of my heart's desire. Holding on to a dream as seasons go by, never afraid to give it a try, a love for another, but never, not for myself. A few finales burst emptiness, and I experience, though, the goodness and fullness. Like the wind, I'd feel the force of a hurricane take my breath away, and I'd feel the gentleness of the breeze as it takes my breath away. With each beat of my heart reminding me of chances I was willing to take, rewinding to images of impossibilities I dared to create, still I had not embraced. I am love. I am loved. Wherever I am is where I am to be. Like the wind, I feel the brief force of a hurricane take my breath away. And now it's morning, 3.15, and I'm awakened by a dream, a dream from the universe whispering a verse to the sparkle of my spirit makes its way to my soul, and I hear it. I am enough. I am worthy. I am love. I am loved. Wanting to stay inside my head instead, as I awakened by a dream, what seems so vivid outside the rigid parameter of my mind, keeping me hidden behind superficial smiles and laughter. Running away from me, huh? I enjoyed the taste of many a Cooper library. Looking down on who I was inside, looking up into the heavens outside. A dream of a thought I wanted a lifetime to fill it was mine, imagining the magic of the ribbons lace tied and bind my heaven and earth, hearing harmonic resonance from the universe whispering to the sparkle in my spirit of my soul. And as my mind can comprehend, I hear it my child, we are one. You are worthy. You are deserving. You are enough. You are loved and you are loved. You are guided by the source of creation and with each step you take, wherever you are, I am. I feel the sensation of a smile because I know as I drift off to sleep comforted by the sound of Chokma and Bina, these words lovingly leave my lips. I'm worthy. I deserve the best. I am enough. I am loved and I am loved. I am guided by creation with each step I take because wherever I am, Wherever I am is where I am. Harmonic resonance from the universe is heard. These words whisper to the sparkle of my spirit in my soul. And as my mind can comprehend, I hear, my child, we are one. You are worthy. You are deserving. You are enough. You are loved and you are loved. We are one. My child, we are one. My child, we are one. It's morning, 3.15, and I'm awakened by a dream, a dream from the universe whispering a verse to the sparkle of my spirit makes its way to my soul. And I hear it, we are one. <laughs> You are enough. You are love. You, you, you are my love. Thank you. Thank you. Hold on for one moment. James? Yes. Stop playing music. 
because it was impeding our ability to hear that brilliant poem. I didn't realize that until now. That's perfectly all right. That's okay. And for that reason, is there a chance you could read the last few lines of that poem yet again for those that did not hear because of the music? The last few lines. The last please. few? Yes. Oh, the start, the starting with it's morning? From that portion, sure. Okay, sure. Absolutely. I think it would be fair. Sure, thank you. Okay, okay no problem. It's morning, 3.15, and I'm awakened by a dream. A dream from the universe whispering a verse to the sparkle of my spirit. And in my soul, it makes its way and I hear it. We are one. I am worthy. I am deserving. I am enough. We are one. We are one. My child, we are one. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Everybody deserves equal time and we're writers and we have to appreciate the importance of every single word. So with that said, I want to hear everything. Now, you have another piece that you want to share? I do, yep. Okay, please, yep, I'm please. staying in I'd love to hear it. Thank you, and this one is emptied, okay. I feel like I'm being emptied, unsure what this is about. Emptied of thought and empty of what I feel. Is this my imagination or hey, is this really real? My mind is not at peace, it's all jittery. My soul feels, feels vexed. Now is this live or is this Memorex? The very foundation is crumbling, thought it was formed of brick. Now it has the texture of straw. It's being lifted up from me, the illusion of security felt. Hold on to things, that's the real deal. As with ice, it's beginning to melt and thaw and thaw, grasping at straws, the sheets beneath the wheat, cutting without cutting into my hand and all of this. I just don't know where I stand, stand in life, stand where? I don't know, I don't know a damn thing. Huh, yet I know, I know a grand thing. My mind search and ask, what is happening? My eyes answer back at me. You know, you're being emptied. I wanna cry, but why? My mind wonders, is it over? Over here, is it over there? My heart beats with the rhythm. This is the beginning of the rest of the best of the rest of my life. Inside where my ego reside of what I thought was who of me is being replaced. Ah, with the true of me. I feel like I'm being emptied. How do I release and just let it be? I wanna cry, I wanna cry, I wanna cry. And I realize why, because I'm afraid, afraid of what I want to crawl into a ball, but there's another side of me that whispers, the ball is not your destiny, is to stand and reveal the spirit, the creator is alive and feel the realness of within. <laughs> it seems like I'm floating, like I'm floating on air. The very foundation is crumbling. Wasn't it formed from brick? Uh, I feel tricked. It resembles the texture of straw, the illusion of security. Hold on to things, things, things. That's the real deal. But now I see as with ice, it begins to melt and thaw. And in all of this, as I reminisce, I see the shallow fullness of what I thought, of what I thought complete. My mind search and ask, what is happening? My eyes answer back at me, you know, you being emptied. It begins, I feel like I'm being emptied. I cry cause I'm filled, my soul is still with the spirit active within. My mind is at peace, nah, it ain't jittery. My soul no longer feels vexed, nope, it ain't Memorex. This is live and I know I'm being healed. I'm living my life like it's golden cause I'm living my life from inside out. Yes, from the windows of my soul, my eyes say to me and I know I'm being emptied. So, if you're feeling confused and just don't know what to do, your mind search and ask what is happening to you on the inside, look deep and I mean deep, deep into your eyes and the windows of your soul will answer. You know, 
beautiful one. You're being emptied. Spirit flows through the soul, soul whispers to the heart, heart sings to the mind, body does the dance to the rhythm, harmony, and melody. When your soul answers, listen, you ain't going to hear it from outside. You're going to hear it from within. Now, going back to mastery begins the moment we realize the need to be emptied. Mm, mm, mm. Thank you yeah. for listening. I am Anita, yes. also known as Archie's Angel. No, it's wonderful. It's absolutely wonderful. Uh, <laughs> listen. I enjoyed your poetic offerings. They gave me much needed sustenance. Um, everyone kindly join in expressing our satisfaction. Please. Thank you. Now, from our bountiful harvest, here is another multi-talented writer. Linda Imbler has eight published poetry collections and one <coughs> ebook of short fiction and poetry. She is a Wichita, Kansas-based author. Learn more at lindaspoetryblog.blogspot.com. In addition to writing, she helps her husband build guitars as well. Linda, please, if you will, share your melodious verses with us. I will, thank you. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Thankfully. Uh, first of all, that, uh, that whole concept of empty was so cool in that Agreed. last one. That, that was just amazing. Agreed. This one is called Having Found the Red Thread, and it was published in Lyrics of Mature Hearts through Bob. Such simple plans for we two, our best times on sandy beaches or kitchens cozy embrace, blanketing like woolen shawls. We'll stay warm in front of fish tanks gleaming lights against the chilliest nights at day's retreat. We hold so few regrets, having perfect symmetry within this closed ladder set. I have one more. No, no, hold on. Let's appreciate that one before you move on. Thank you. Thank you. Cool. Okay. This one is called Flight. And Bob also published this one. Um, I'm not quite sure. You have your hands in so many your fingers in so many pies it's kind of hard to know which it was but but i understood that you published it i think of myself as a bird with twigs to save for a nest of memory for remembrance of labors well done and much sweet music played i have at times been queen of all music enjoyed the zoom the sweep and the rush of a soft landing after a rough flight I never found time for mocking the fates at the fading view of the day, but made time instead for singing life in deep-throated tones. With, with dearest friends, there was never an end to what we could talk about and learn. No terminus to listing ways in which we could leave the world a better place. So we stayed patient and waited. We marveled at how quickly time had elapsed since the last sunset rolled along. We hypothesized what might erase all our world and prognosticated when peace would come again. I recall, I will recall when my final dawn sneaks forward the many grades and pitfalls I stumble through while remaining upright. I'll keep walking in shades of beauty, seeing the twinkling stars play, hold my frail wings in supplication and never cease to pray. I'll survive the stormy blasts to walk beneath archway of a rainbow, delighting and delighted that I did not fail and get there just in time to the wind-kissed sea, then fly lightly my way as the dim eyes arrives. Thank you. No, thank you. Would you like to share some more? Oh, I have one more. It's kind of, it's short. It's fine. Uh, I write some Gothic stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, this is called Pose Annabelle Lee. Uh. Dearly departed, 
your face fitted inside in an, an ornate filigree frame. Your feathered hat surrounds a raw bone face. Your shoulders hold a filmy wrap of satin and lace. Your skeletal fingers shift in the light on graceful hands. Velvet gloves clasped as you, the lost lover, endure your woeful waiting as the pendulum wall clock ticks and you hoard his books as you anticipate his arrival. Thank you. Mm, no, thank you. Your work is malefic. Long after this program, I will savor its profundity. Thank you for saving our ears and minds, Linda. Thank you again. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Now, let's see. Speaking of satisfaction, let me introduce you to a poet who can sate the intellectual needs of readers. Robert Dickerson is a New York writer who thinks about moving to Berlin. He believes poetry is the most exciting art form because you can't fake it. There is nothing fallacious about my respect for Robert Dickinson. Join me in giving him our respectful attention. Robert, give us your poetical insights from the Big Apple. Robert, come in, Robert. Thanks so much, Bob. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Yeah. Let's give Robert a round of applause, please. I have two poems about time and how it passes mm. and, uh, and leaves us behind whether we like it or not. And the first one is also a seasonal poem. Here goes. <laughs> Spring. Now is the time to come. <laughs> and the tree swept clean the blossoms, posed into the gutter, like after the wedding confetti, stands merely green. But what green? Overnight, the busy painter, not loath, for nature abhorreth a vacuum, tints each leaf with gold betokening growth. We shall back brands to an ancient song coined novel words. Marvel how the times return and returning move along. Part two called Natur Mort, which means, of course, still life. Mm -hmm. And the, the object is a bowl of fruit. In a blue bowl, a yellow apple, an hourglass of air, a second apple, a brace of plums, a saucy pear, more rifts of air, a smiling banana, three brown and hirsute kiwis, once round, now doubting their roundness, roundness doubted by us rather, and rightly, they're no longer so round. See, one apple's duller, duller than its fellows, anyhow, duller than the day it was set there, fresh grubbed, nor does the pear float so saucily. Not to worry, they're still wonderful, delicious in their crenulated way. Didn't someone say, once ripeness is all, and uber ripeness, better still? Now they're for painting, a Cezanne, or for to be cobbled into abstraction, feed someone's pathos, fire a soliloquy. Everything's changed in the new light, even the blues differ, only the air's the same. Thank you. Well, thank you. Aside from sharing the same first name, we have a mutual love for poetry. Your contribution to the medium is truly meritorious. Thank you, Robert. Thank you. Creative writing as a medium is meritorious for many reasons. Among them is the way it can make individuals seek 
the redemptive qualities in the world and themselves. Our next writer understands this very well. Tim Staley was born in Montgomery, Alabama in 1975. He founded Grandma Moses Press in 1992 and continues to serve as primary caregiver. For the last 17 years, he's taught poetry at the high school level in Las Cruces, New Mexico. Tim, being a fan of your work, I'm looking forward to hearing your edifying material. Tim, where are you? Hey, all right. Hey, thank you so much for having me. This is really great to hear all this great work and connect with y'all. I've been inspired already. Uh, this is this first what's called uh, my first Black Lives Matter event, Plaza de las Cruces, New Mexico, September 12th, 2020. We threw Frisbee on the grass by Bank of the West. Sylvia asked me who the middleman was and what's his favorite color. In the ninth century AD, the Chinese discovered gunpowder looking for immortality. The late day sun was alien and carroty from the Colorado fires. I noticed at the time, I'm not just looking back. The restaurant patio on the corner was at capacity and clapping emphatically for a white woman and her accompanist after their set of covers, including Tracy Chapman, not fast car, but the one that says, give me one reason to stay here and I'll turn right back around. A little girl lost her favorite doll and Franz Kafka said, everything you love, you will eventually lose. But love will return in a different form. A swimming child approaches your feet from the bottom of a mushroom cloud. In her mouth, a Confederate blood diamond. I didn't see any black people. One million dead birds found in the Tularosa Basin, warblers, sparrows, swallows, blackbirds, western wood, peewees, flycatchers, simple dehydration or too much smoke inhalation times one million. Did I already tell you about the Colorado fires? I didn't see any cops, but so many men cruising down Main Street, revving their engines, half zombie, half yeoman farmer. Yeoman farmers were the farmers in Alabama too poor for slaves, but hey, don't worry. They were fiercely independent. I saw a man heading south in a Conestoga wagon, heading toward what would become South Carolina with a Bible in one hand and Shakespeare in the other. Bell Hook said, white slave owners punished their slaves regularly for simply looking at them. I was in the basement of the Sigma New House in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. The pledge master said, never make eye contact with an active. Eyelashes last about 150 days. Hasty constellations laid out like ropes on waves unravel on their way down. You know, Stone Mountain over there outside Georgia, Robert outside Atlanta, Robert E. Lee's as tall as a nine story building. Jeff Davis's thumb is the size of a sofa, the largest base relief sculpture in the world. It can't be that hard to uncarve. The Miracle Whip potato salad, the baked beans, the stewed okra, the collard greens, the mac and cheese with the breadcrumb topping, smelling of dead bodies. The human nose can detect about one trillion smells. I've never been inside a black person's house. My therapist says white guilt doesn't help the movement. Sylvia wanted to know, does excitement always mean good? I told her men used to solve their issues with duels. She said, what did women do? <sighs> hey, well, th there's one. Uh, I'd like to read. Uh, no, no, one. hold on. Let's acknowledge oh. that one before you go any further. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Um, thank you, guys. This has been great to share this share this with you. Um, so my um, mother-in-law, I, I wanted to read some poems about her. She passed away from from COVID. 
Uh, and I think y'all would have uh, appreciated her just because she was very into poetry. And in the uh, early 80s, she was working on a dissertation of a feminist poets. She was really into people like Audre Lorde and in particular Marge Piercy and was working on a, a dissertation and, and was leading feminist uh, marches in Chicago. Uh, and then had an aneurysm and, and her life uh, couldn't, she couldn't do the literary stuff um, anymore. And Sorry she, for your loss. I'm sorry yeah. For your loss. And then uh, yeah. ended up moving down to Las Cruces from Chicago and we took care of her and she got uh, Alzheimer's and, um, and then COVID and this sort of, I'm hoping you guys can learn a little bit about her through these, uh, through these poems. It's, uh, I'm gonna just going to read three in this series and Please I should do. still be within my time. Here we go. Uh, my wife is Suzanne and her name was Lois. I think you'll, I think everything else you'll get. Uh, and this is my, my wife's mom. Suzanne writes a novel inside her head about her mom, Lois. It's called Sister Amadeo. There's being born in Pittsburgh, 1942. There's leaving the convent with an acoustic. There's her and Tom's babies scrabbling on the floor. There's a divorce. There's a bungalow on the south side of Chicago with sandwich fixings in the fridge, Lebanon bologna, Limburger cheese, horseradish, stone ground mustard, butter lettuce, bread and butter pickles, pumpernickel rye. There's a jar of fire roasted red peppers glowing on the counter. The dining room is soaked with soft light and poetry. Marge Piercy open on the table. With a pen from Chesterfield Federal, Lois underlines a line. She makes notes in, a, in the margins of a dissertation she could not finish. I tell Suzanne to start the brain damage part like this. That year, the yellowing of the trees came on like an aneurysm. Suggesting line edits for a novel in your wife's head is dangerous. Is it empathy or something worse? There's the live-in lesbian lover. There's the pop-up trailer and sagatak and the clatter of Yahtzee dice on the laminate table. There's the sway of Merritt's cigarette smoke out the mesh window. There's the year she moved to New Mexico and the year we gave everything but her clothes to a family who lost their home in a fire. There's the memory care unit. There's the lime, sherbet, sierra, mist, punch of the Christmas party. Suzanne says, easy for you. I can't write those things until she's dead. Two, Lois kisses you goodbye on the forehead and on the neck. This, the only skin showing between the shower cap and disposable goggles which keep fogging and the robe which ties and folds around you. Lois whispers, mother and dad and a few others but you can't hear because the shower cap over your ears and your 45 years over your ears and you race to the bathroom and you scrub her kisses from your forehead and just above your collarbone with antibacterial soap until your skin rips from the cracks and 45 years pour out. And you race past the nurses and you go to the hospital's parking garage and you disrobe and you burn your clothes. Three. Suzanne mm -hmm. says to her sister, mom died at 8.30. Mm -hmm. A train punches through a moving blanket of fog. Richton Park, the last stop south of Chicago of the Metra electric line. See all the people shifting from one stupid foot to the other. The optic nerve of a hummingbird on a spool with common thread. It smells like wire burning. It hisses like a Ziploc bag of vinegar and baking soda taped to the shower head. It sticks to my fingers like tapioca pudding. The memory care unit puts her stuff in two boxes with a lamp on top. All her stuff in two large U-Haul boxes with a lamp on top. How many boxes would you be? How many lamps? They call Suzanne, they say, ready for pickup. Thank you. No, thank you. Tim, for poetry, conduits for races and cultures to come together, due to your honest effort and sincere accomplishments, I thank you.
Hey, thank you for Good having work. me. It's a pleasure. Good work. Good work. I never tire of thanking this next artist for her creative endeavors. LaFathia White is a native New Yorker. Her love of poetry grew over time after she began daily journal writing in 2017. Today, she resides in North Carolina, where she focuses on her writing and visual storytelling through the art of photography. Mm -hmm. Alan's sister, consider this forum to be your gallery. Kindly exhibit your word pictures for us. Good Thank evening. You. Yes. Good evening. Hello. Can you hear me out there? Yes. Good. Good. It's been an honor. So many great poets this evening. Agreed. I'm Agreed. very inspired. Agreed. I have one, one that I'm going to read. Uh, and I have to leave you all shortly. Oh, I do. You're not supposed to do that. I know, but I'm. But we're all going to have a home. sleepover at the end of the program. <laughs> I, I, you know, I can, I have to leave, but I, I will be coming back. So, okay, sure. We'll okay. leave the light on so you can find us. Yes. <laughs> yes. <Okay>. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> this one is entitled An Ocean Full of Tears. It was inspired by a young lady. Uh, I was vi visiting a doctor maybe three years ago, and we just had a great conversation. And, um, she inspired me to write this. She was talking about someone that died and she just said it was like an ocean full of tears. And um, this is what I came up with. The ocean is a location where I close my eyes, exhale and listen to the splashing waves gushing on rock stones, sun beaming on my face, the ocean is my sacred grace, my happy place where I release and pray to find peace. But for some, it is a confined space where tears have drowned in a sea of grief, disbelief and fear from past relationships, hurt and pain, loved ones who are no longer here, some healing, from an ocean full of tears. It's very short and sweet for you. I'll give you one more. That was very short. I'll give you one more. Um, I like seconds. You like seconds? You, yeah, well, you can tell by my stomach, I like seconds. Yeah. <laughs> let's see if I can find the one that I want. Oh, let's see. Okay, let me go here. Uh, this one is called, um, let's see, uh, give me a second, give me a second. I'm feeling generous today. I'm going to give you two seconds. Give me two seconds. <laughs> Please give me two seconds. I might sure, need You got it. For you, seconds. anything. Anything. Uh, Give me another second. Okay. You're not charging for seconds these days. Okay. <laughs> um, I thought this piece was here. Mm. Uh, this piece is not here. Hmm. Would you consider Let's sharing see. another one? Um. I might can do that, but let's see. Let me go further. Excuse me one second. Um, Take as much time as you need. Agreed, agreed, agreed. It won't be that much longer. Let me pull it up right now. I was just thinking of the dueling. You know, you always, you, you call for a second, you know, if you're ready to. <laughs> I got you. <laughs> now, see, I wasn't planning on reading this. That's why this happened. Uh, it happens to all of us, don't worry about it. Why can't we see him? Who is the individual in question? To whom are you referring? Okay. Why am I speaking? Oh, right. You can't see me? I can see. I can see you. I can, oh, see. Okay. you can't see me? I can Here see I am. You. 
Yeah, there she is. I can, can you see, see her now? Yeah. I can see. You see Tim. me now? I can see Linda and I can see Fred. No one else. Oh, you can't see everyone. You can't see the fire tablet? Yes, it's a Probably fire the tablet. The way in which you have your. Um, the way it's set up, she has Exactly. It, uh, Thank you for finishing oh, that sentence for me because I was completely incapable of doing that myself. So, Edna, I want you to listen to me. There's yes. these, these views. So, on the top of your Zoom thing, it says view on the top right, right? And it looks uh, like a uh, Brady Bunch. Okay. Right. All the boxes will appear. So you want to do right. gal you want to do gallery view, not speaker view. You, you want to get gallery view, and you can get everybody exactly simultaneously. Yeah. Yeah. So I I, I found it. Is she ready? Do you? Yes, she need we're ready. Please. Okay. Proceed. Yes, please. This is entitled South Rim. Okay. When I went to visit the Grand Canyon, this inspired me to write this. It was cold and damp when we reached the peak. Isis, Buddha, Jupiter, Cedar Mountain, surrounding colorful views of the temples all in reach. Startled and meek, mesmerized by your beauty, tears rolling down my cheeks, unable to speak. I stare and breathe. Springtime in April, this time next year, the cycle of nature will repeat. Winding roads, no streets, cliff retreats, immense landscapes and a glass plank bridges, a spectacular vision. Only God can create such an amazing composition, the Grand Canyon. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. Thank you for this Thank platform. You. Please stick around because I'm going to ask all the poets a question and I would love to hear your response. But before we get to that, in a terse verse of mine, I wrote that a poet must possess the eyes of a bird. You with your camera and poetical photos of the world prove that fact, Lefathia. You make me grateful for my ability to see. Thank you. Deep bow, deep bow. Deep Please bow. stick around. I'm telling you, I'm going to ask everybody a question. We're almost finished the program. Come on. Okay. It's going to be okay. okay. Try. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Greatly appreciate it. Now, I see an intelligent and talented poet who always deserves an A plus for her excellent effort. Judy C. Andrews received a Master of Arts degree in English and or Creative Writing and a Bachelor of Arts degree in Liberal Arts and Sciences from the City College of New York. She has written two novels of suspense and a book of poetry. Her work focuses on the themes of foster care and Gula and or Geechee history. Visit her website, blessedbrown.com. Are you there? Yes, you yes. are. Yes, hello, everybody. Hello. It's nice. It's a blessing to have you here, Judy. <laughs> My prayers will come true once you recite your work. Oh, that is so sweet. <laughs> well, this is something new. Thank you for inviting me. You know, underground books is something else. You know, amazing, an amazing uh, accomplishment. So it's a pleasure for me to be here for that. I'm going to read uh, a poem uh, called uh, The New Language. I just came from a book, a book party for me at Sisters yes. Town. So now I'm going to, you know, have some fun and, you know, read this. Um, actually, this is not a fun poem. This is uh, in, in lieu of the uh, verdict um, that was rendered to Mr. Chauvin. I wrote this particular poem about um, in 2016, and I added on to it um, from my uh, poetry book, uh, The Gathering of Gemstones. So I'm going to read this. Um, I believe it's uh, nine minutes long. So um, I think you said 10 minutes. Yes, so that's okay. Okay, I don't want to go over because I want to follow the rules. <laughs> I remember you threw the rules out a long time ago, but go ahead, please. <laughs> who who well, made the rules? <laughs> it's called um, The New Language. In my lifetime, I have seen the 60s as a child. Danced until the sun's brilliance performed streams of light into my soul during the 70s. Graduated in the 80s with prestige that floated on the backs of African kings. Affirming actions lifted me toward glass ceilings and corporate strife. And I fell a few times. One day in 2016, I found myself staring 
socializing into the eyes of PCs, Androids, and Facebook that brought me to sadness, scarred my dreams, swallowed my prestige, nibbled on my success, and flashed nightmares into my screams for the souls of African-American kings and queens fighting a demon named police brutality. I woke mm -hmm. up crying on a sun-filled day for Philando Castile, Alton Sterling, Sandra Bland, Eric Garner, Freddie Gray, Michael Brown, Tamir Rice, Trayvon Martin, Walter Scott, Sean Bell, Laquan mm -hmm. McDonald, Amadou Diallo, Eleanor Bumpers, 13 disciples. There are enough names to fill 1,000 volumes, all titled Black Lives Do Not Matter. I couldn't sleep for two quiet weeks when thunder slammed into Louisiana, Minnesota, and Texas, a hot summer 2016. Four years later, again, summer 2020, a year filled with nightmares, a pandemic, civil unrest, an internet of hate, an inferno of hate from a White House resident fattened with lies, a menu of half-truths and a platter sprinkled with hatred exploded, intensified, trumped my spirit, fell into my heart and left it weeping behind Georgia oak trees that still protect my soul. Police shootings, videotapes, cell phone cameras witnessed truth and murder. Breonna Taylor, Breonna Taylor in her own bed, sleeping. George Floyd choked to death by a policeman's knee. Ahmaud Aubrey hunted while jogging. Elijah McLean carrying a bag of groceries. Botham Jean eating ice cream. Police shootings, videotapes, cell phone cameras witnessed trash, truth, and maiming. Jacob Blake shot in the back, paralyzed. Stop, breathe. I had to take a deep breath. I waited for hope on December 31st, 2020. But on January 6, 2021, madness, a swamp, erupted. Videotaped sadness and cell phone cameras witnessed truth and destruction on an old fashioned auction block where my ancestors peered into the eyes of madmen, where creatures groped delicate structures. I watched Capitol Hill burn as MAGA creatures slithered in and out of democracy. Guided by the White House resident, creature, crafty, cruel, and fat with lies, the resident creature spit words of violence that dated back to an original sin, slavery, still reeking with sweat, blood, tears on the auction block where brutality lives. The resident creature spilled white supremacy like gasoline over a raging fire, torching truth. Now the world is watching. This is what America looks like. I found myself in an alternate reality wandering through tunnels of fake news. No MAGA residents, creatures were sprayed with tear, gra tear gas or water or shot with rubber bullets. Yet AR-15s, bricks, and the American flag were weaponized right before my eyes. Someone in blue escorted a hueless elderly phantom of whiteness down the steps of the Capitol building as I thought how my eyes must have deceived me. Where was that escort when black lives were sprayed with tear gas, seeking help from the burn while the White House resident creature carried a Bible past them, turned upside down to give us the perception of holiness while bamboozling us in front of a closed church. 
The smoke scorches my soul as I wait for the language named change. I feel fire burning in my gut. I found myself genuflecting for hours, asking questions. Will there be a fire next time? Will I explode? In my lifetime, I have not had much to complain about. I was that child dancing in the brilliance of civil rights with blacks and whites, racing toward glass ceilings together under a stream of affirmative action rainbows, living the dream of an African-American king. In my lifetime, I yearn to dance in the beat of a chant, Black Lives Matter, with no apology to others. I yearn to dance in the essence of gratitude for Obama greatness with no apology to others. I yearn to dance with no apology for the color of my skin, the texture of my hair, the soul of my eyes, the brightness of my teeth, the swag of my step, the courage of my ancestors, the future of my descendants, the light and hearts of darkness. No more apologies to others for honoring the contributions of African-Americans who shed tears, blood, sweat in the face of continuous profound horrors, Karens, white privilege, while speaking an old language named gun violence, a Creole Patois pigeon named police brutality and an English language named racism. But I wait for a new language named change as tears continue to kiss my face for 1,000 more disciples who have yet to be placed in the dangerous tunnel of hate. While I wait, let America learn a new language named Black Lives Matter without asking why or adding a modifier because I want to believe a change is coming soon. Unfortunately, that is the old language named hope. Thank you. Oh yeah, oh yeah, wonderful. Thank you very much, Bob, thank you. Almost religiously, I have been following your work, Judy. Based <laughs> on your published material, I have faith that your success will continue. Thank you, that was great. That was great. Thank you very much for being here. I, I'm grateful to be invited here. Thank you. Please stick around because I want to ask you a question uh, during the program, okay? Okay, I'll be. I'll Please. stick around. Thank you. It's truly appreciated. My admiration continues for the following writer. Edna Iris Garcia was born in Umacao, Puerto Rico. She received a BA and a master's degree in bilingual education. Furthermore, Edna was the first Puerto Rican female in Fairfield County elected to the Connecticut General Assembly. For over 33 years, she taught at the high school level and served her community with notable distinction. At present, she is in the process of finishing a semi-autobiographical novel. In the book of my life, Edna plays a vital role. Trust me, she is a great person who can put up with a character like me. Um, Edna, kindly share your thoughts on life with our audience. Please, round of applause for Edna. Thank you. Thank you. I'm grateful for the invitation and for sharing with this uh, magnificent uh, panel that you have put together. I was very touched, Judy, by your poem. It brought me to tears because I pay attention to what is going on around us and it sat into my heart. So like you, I'm hopeful for the future and you did a wonderful job with your poem. My first poem, Thank you. Mm -hmm. I Speak For Us, is dedicated to all women who endure domestic violence. It was published in the Shouted Out Anthology. And here it goes. I speak the language of abused women. It sounds like screams in a nightmare. I speak the language of abused women. The words hold a ton of bricks around without the possibility of ever resting. I speak the language of abuse women, feeling that there's no relief on the way. I speak the language of abuse women, is lifelong pain echoes throughout the struggle to rebuild lives. 
I speak the language of abused women because there are daily reminders all around of how laws fail to defend them. I speak the language of abused women since they don't need the political feel good talk from opportunists who pretend to know what it feels like to have one's face constantly punched by a coward's fist. I speak the language of abused women because justice for battered women comes in small, slow doses, the way an IV drifts fluid into veins. I speak the language of abused women for millions of victims who need help. I speak the language of abused women. Even though there seems to be no help in sight, I speak the language of abused women until the day that everyone cares and I'll speak the language of abused women until the day that humanity takes a stand. Yes. Thank you. Um, my next poem deals with personal experiences and it is entitled, My Unwanted Mask. Um, Silver Birch Press posted this piece on his site. Behind layers of makeup and coats of lipstick, I cover my bruises and busted lip. Behind hair swept over black eye and swollen jaw, I maintain a comforting mask for my daughter and son. Behind a facade for friends, family members, and an oblivious society, these bruised and battered women hated her abusive husband and despise an old decade that allowed men to use women as possessions for uninvited desires behind the fakery of matrimonial compatibility. But then my newly formed self-worth emerged and raised children on my own. From warring divorce, I found the victory of peace, unmasked and unafraid, I faced the future. Thank you. Okay, and I wanna share one more poem. I am pleased to say that um, this poem is called Regret and that it appears on, in the anthology, Lyrics of My Sure Hearts on page 10. It looks familiar. <laughs> okay. Regret. Autumn came suddenly like a thief stealing my dreams of a youthful spring filled with new sunrises, reviving my senses. Autumn came suddenly in the manner of a deceiver. It made me confuse fleeting moments of success with unquestionable happiness. Autumn came suddenly and with it memories of vain useless laurels that I would have gladly exchanged for some measure of happiness. Mm. Thank you. No, thank you. Are you sure you don't want to share another? You have time. Are well, you sure? I have one. I have one more that I, um, we have if time. you allowed me, I will share it. I wrote this one. Um, it's your world. I'm really living it. <laughs> okay. I wrote this one uh, while suffering from COVID-19. Uh, and I entitled it Quarantine in My Corner of the World. While quarantine and doing the excruciating effects of COVID-19, the headaches, the soreness, the nausea, the vomiting, the diarrhea and dysphoria, I am deteriorating from desolation due to the isolation from those I love. Lost in illness, my tired eyes turn to the media for curative information and TV, on TV and social networking. Besides seeing these heartening reports about freezer trailers filled with formerly flowering lives, there are other reports on people not getting a chance to tell friends and family members farewell. 
reports of a hellish system that failed the aged, reports of rapid infections, reports about dissatisfaction with social distances and reports of political division. By the time my mind processes all those reports, I am grateful about seeing stories of bravery from doctors, nurses, first responders, service workers, the heroism of neighbors nursing neighbors in need. And above all, I am overjoyed over each opine, showing hope for the blood of COVID-19 survivors. Here, quarantine in my quarter of the world, I offer them this ode dedicated to all who are doing something to end our undoing. Thank you. Well, thank you. Thank you. Through your writing and actions, you make everyone's existence into a cherished chapter in a valued book, Edna. Fellow bibliophiles, help me dedicate a moment to Edna's poetical contribution. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Now, before I proceed, I need to ask a question. Where are you, DLT? Are you here, DLT? I am here. I don't know how to see you all. I am here. Where are you right. calling? Where are you calling from? I'm calling from Washington, D.C. Washington, the capital of the United States of America. I was just there. Beautiful uh, cherry blossoms. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Agreed. Agreed. Yes. So. What can we do to rectify this problem, James, you being the smarter individual in this conversation? Well, I, I mean, if there was people that could figure out how to use their phones in Washington, D.C., we might be uh, better off in hey, general. Hey, hey, stop being so damn good. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, watch that. Watch that, fellow. <laughs> okay. Um, is there any suggestion that we could make? to uh, help? I don't know. Um, I, I, I've never used a phone on the Zoom. I, I mean, I imagine she's here. She can see us. Can you see us? Can you see us? No? I don't see you all. I only can hear you. I've heard the wonderful poet. Right. If you, if it, no one minds, I can read without. Um, I think that's perfectly I, appropriate. That's fine. Radio hour mm -hmm. is brilliant. Sure, exactly. It us. takes you back to the radio format. Yes, absolutely. Uh, oh. She might have to turn her camera's phone, on, her camera on. Maybe it's That's a possible. Camera. Would you like to try that? With it's a camera. Know, that. that could be yeah. it too. You want to try that? I like the, you know, the radio show. Let's go. Let's oh. see. Listen, I'm a fan Let's of the go. shadow. You know. <laughs> yes, thanks for inviting me. Thank you for the shadow knows. Okay, so we'll just continue in the radio format. How about that? All right. It's okay with me if it's okay with everyone else. It's fine. Uh, here's a page from the book of my life. As a child, I fell in love with poetry. Uh, the book that filled my mind with imagery and rhythm was A Child Garden of Verses by Robert Louis Stevenson. Let me tell you about another poet who started early in life. DLT has been writing creatively since the age of 13. Uh, more recently, she completed her first book of poetry titled Healing Me in 2018. Presently, right here in 2021, I am happy that you will share your work, talent, and soul. By applauding, let's show her how much we are glad that she is here now. Come on. Thank you very much. I just have a short poem to share with you. Mm -hmm. um, the title is Black Man. Black man, loved, chosen, and set apart. I always have you on my heart. Black man, put your hand in God's hand so you can withstand my brother, my friend. We need justice and police reform. Nightmare in a blue uniform. It's become the norm. Again, black man, for you we mourn. My brother, my friend. Black man, put your hand in God's hand so you can withstand my brother, my friend. Peaceful protest amid racial unrest. Let me hold your hand. With you I stand, beautiful black man. Woo. That's him. Excellent. Thank you. 
Yeah. Your work is the right note. Thank you for oh, giving me poetry. Cool. Such a lovely melody. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. I'm sorry? Thank you for inviting me. Oh, I'm Appreciate very it. happy to have you here. And I look forward to seeing you in the future. And I look forward to corresponding with you in the future as well. God bless. God bless you as well. Now, at this point, we're going to deviate from all things that were planned because of a guy named Fred Simpson. Where are you, Fred? <laughs> Fred? Oh, Fred. Hello, Fred. Hello. Hi, Bob. Okay, hold on. Oh, that's right. Everybody else understood the format. They were supposed to send a three-line bio so I could introduce them. You, on the other hand, decided to deviate from this format. So I have to do this extemporaneously. So here we go. Fred is a brilliant percussionist. He is a brilliant poet. I had the great pleasure of working with him on innumerable occasions. Um, he probably found me to be a real pain in the ass to work with, essentially, but we're not going to talk about that now. Uh, can I say that aloud? <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Did that oh actually come God. out? He is a true. Yeah. <laughs> But anyway, uh, I'm always happy to see Fred, and I'm glad that he's going to participate. So, without further ado, Fred, the floor is yours. Now you have about ten minutes, buddy. Thank you so much, Bob. I I, I was just standing by, uh, understanding uh, that I I kind of jumped on the bandwagon within the within the eleventh hour. So thank you so much the opportunity and it's been a pleasure working with you come on okay so i uh i have two poems i'm i'm, I'm not going to read from from my book uh i'm going to read uh this is called exist close your eyes inhale exhale you are asleep you will hear and obey my words. <laughs> Head if you are with me. Good. Now understand, this is not an essay. It exists solely as a poem. Consider this crossword clue. Synonym for R, A-R-E. The answer, exist. Exist can intersect with other EX words in a puzzle like exigent, defined as of an urgent need or demand. Now concentrate. Try being in the moment. Being is a good crossword clue because it is ambiguous. It can be a noun or part of a compound verb. But if you are with me, good. I'm glad we currently exist on the same page because this poem is about to take a sudden turn. It is sometimes exigent to state the obvious for a greater good, like hearing out loud that neo-Nazis, white supremacists, anti-Semites, anti-Asians, and all kinds of hate groups exist. The Southern Poverty Law Center currently pinpoints 917 various active hate groups on their map of the continental United States. Now, take a breath. Let the poem transport you into outer space for a global view of Earth's surface. See it coded with 7.664 billion human heat signatures, one indistinguishable from the other, but all red-blooded, be they in red, blue, or purple states in America, or be they red as in communist, or black as in African, brown and the pejorative yellow as in Asian, or be they white. Seven billion plus dots around the globe, lovers, haters, the ignorant, the enlightened, no discernible difference among them when viewed from afar. Superiority and inferiority complexes that breed ugliness and all the greed in this world, why do these things exist? 
by birthright, earth is everyone's home. Ye of all colors, shapes, sizes, let's take a ride. We'll view our little planet from on high. Nod if you're on board. Good. And when I snap my finger, you'll awake with this one thought. Some the need does exist for a poem to be a rant, to be a diatribe. Thank you. Woo. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes. And uh, one more short. Please. This is along the theme of, of, of Poetry Month and uh, in, in Bob's uh, uh, gracious invite, uh, the idea of the spoken word and, and language as, as something to be treasured, to be a gift. And Bob has always had that appreciation and and expressed it in a very articulate, effective way. Thank you. This is called Hear Em and Weep. These are my words. I owe them fit release, whatever they summon while silent on the page, be it with verve or gravitas. Feigned apathy could be the plate on which they are best served. Words deserve to be delivered well. Soft pats off a butter knife, a whisper that sizzles, or by slash of cutlass blade, crimson words billow over us, articulating life and musings on what awaits on the other side. Words intrinsically loud like bang or soft muted on the page, sometimes need to be aired, quiet ink to be freed, to sing. Verse well-spoken suspends us for a time. Therapy that resonates, we weep, we breathe. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. As Thank always, you, your timing is impeccable. Uh, the subject matter is perfect. You're a brilliant writer. You're a brilliant performer. And I look forward to the day that we can actually work together again. Fred. Oh, yeah, that would be great. Thank that you, Bob. Thank perfect. you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Let's see. Like I said earlier, uh, James Browning Keppel contributes his very being to underground books. Uh, his effort is not fruitless. It has produced a great crop of collections by some innovative poets. Refer to www.undergroundbooks.org and see what I mean. Within that list of titles, you will find my modest work. That brings up another point. James is in the process of publishing a new and expanded version of my chapbook, Verses of Realness. My high regard for James, despite our ideological differences, is very real. <laughs> Therefore, really give a round of applause for James and Underground Books. Come on, guys. Okay, James, it's time to show us why we enjoy your creations. All right, so I didn't even really, I was walking out all day today in Harlem. Um, it's changed a lot. I've been in Harlem for about 13 years. Gotcha. And it's not the same place. Don't come here. It's, I'm, I'm just glad to be at the very, kind of the top because right. like anything from Central Park all the way up to 125th, you wouldn't even uh, recognize it these days. Um, I got you. So that was kind of weird. And mm -hmm. then I went to like a subway and I got a sandwich, sat in Central Park. And then I, I realized I had to do this. So I'm here. Um, I'm not really promoting any sort of poetry, but I would like to share with you this. Let's see if we can do this right. Uh, mm -hmm. Screen two. All right, so can you see this screen? Mm -hmm. yes, I can. If, you go, if you go to Jimbo Brown on YouTube, what I'm doing is I'm making movies. So this is a new one, a walk through Balik Lagal, Turkey. Right. Yeah. Yes, yes. You, you can, well, the reason why it matters to me to even bring it up is, let's see, the meaning controls, it's not there, is because if you subscribe to that channel, you could be like my 45th, 46th, 47th subscriber, and that would mean a lot to me in my heart. Uh, and I, I want to thank everybody for coming out. And you guys did great. Your poetry was amazing. Um, 
just happy to be here like you guys. Uh, this is a book uh, called Thus Virginia Passes, um, <coughs> available somewhere. Mm -hmm. And I'll just read, um, I didn't really want, I want to just read a, a poem. It's entitled uh, A Prelude to Ophiuchus. Return our earth sea celestial to rouse the tides of far off Rockaway. Slowly bring within our longs humble skiff to furthermore bring to us fine cut ore. Whence we dabble perihelion, conjure a swirling of orbs to push us further through this doleful eve and rescue our heroic noble souls, once ominous purveyors of your stars. For this once crafted crust molten and eruptus calmed and cooled the lapping spray sodium chloride that did in the twilight stream of steam forward our atoms, a ash of health combined in wondrous deliberation to creature out your lakes and streams, our vaunted roofs in heaven, our hidden caverns of hell spread forth in germination, beautiful beds of salt marsh and shadowed habitants under trees. These ferocious deities of creation held obdurate silence amongst the soul undetermined beacons of beaming celestial light breaking intermittently into chants, whispers, bellows from the faults creaking and shifting with their join pole towards a heavenly father, Milton and his pandered lord, Dante in his established descent, attempted in quest for human righteousness amidst a body Christ, found but only paradise lost. This violent upheaval arose our true soft communion with God. For in these precious beginnings, Tiamat and the Titans overlooked surely brutus monsters. And this atmosphere was rained down upon by fire, snow, and captured but few bones, and now again we face rest, where we must herald back that this continued rearranging will eradicate us conscious and high-minded and breathing off it as microorganisms with rocket ships to space. We shall be the lost fuel under sediment, forgotten, and in this realization a desperate dance begins. For this power and poetry and epic design and history, we need incense sacrifice and summonings to protect us. For the earth has grown weary of our consumptive material identity. It is past time that its fruit spiritual will go stolen unnoticed. It is past time that we have forgotten the force of solar bodies, the deep ancient proverbs and incantations whittled in stone, born upon the brains of this last generation of children to save us. And but what few children of the machine are present Resplendent, innocent cherubs of ion light, dressed seraph, an idea amidst untucked stones, shared roughed up nebulous. This tale is not a burden. It is a search for, from a seeker, though semi-connected instantaneous archivist poet, daring a bit in unstable transition, all of us on satellite earth have booked passage for, a ship in command of the heavens, this Ophiuchus, as a prelude to Ophiuchus. I just want to say something. Um, in addition to perambulating, uh, James shares a lot of very interesting information on his YouTube channel, uh, historical information, geographical information. It's very informative and quite entertaining. So yeah, the, road to, the road to Gebek, the road to Gebekli Tepe, part two, is the video I just released yesterday. Um, a walk through Balik Lagol. It's like the most holy. It's where Ibrahim was put into uh, the fire and Allah took the water and cooled it and all the embers of the flames turned into goldfish. And there's just this massive fish lake. That's what it's translated into. And that's, you know, a beautiful, it's the city of prophets. It's really interesting. If you want to see like the travel channel is mainly me not talking much and just showing you what it looks like. Gotcha. Well, thank you for actually proving my point, James. <laughs> Just by adding that alone, you proved my point, so I don't have to say any more on that subject. Let's try uh, YouTube channel. <laughs> <laughs> James, on behalf of everyone here, we are grateful for your artistry. Thank you so A much. round of applause for James. Thank you. Uh, uh, let's see now. What, what is the name of his YouTube channel? 